Frankly, at the time where he was alive, Karl Marx should have been thrown in jail and all of his books should have been burned. I know, I know, crazy, right? Whoa, 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 calm down. No, 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 no. We're talking about a guy who, again, his ideas were so reckless that they led to the deaths of, like I said, hundreds of millions of people, and they're currently leading to the downfall of our civilization. So, you know, that's my take on Karl Marx. At the time, back in 1800s Germany, he should have been thrown in jail. All copies of Das Kapital and, uh, you know, Communist Manifesto should have been burned. Now, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. But Vince, he has a right to free speech as well, you know, perhaps, maybe. I don't know, maybe. But the thing is, he never lived in the United States. In fact, I believe at the time he was born, the U.S. had not even incorporated the First Amendment on the state level. And so even in the United States, understand at this time, there were things like blasphemy laws, you know, states actually did sometimes infringe on free speech. This was Germany in the 1800s. All I'm saying and all I said earlier today is I don't know if free speech was such a universally recognized thing back then. OK, not sure about that. And all I'm saying is considering that's how things used to be. I'm not saying they should be like that. I'm just saying considering that's the way things used to be, considering things were like that in, you know, classical Europe. All I'm saying is perhaps the proper authorities in question at the time should have, uh, you know, used their power for good. That's all I'm saying. Right. Because I'm sure plenty of people back in the day got jailed for things that they said. I'm pretty sure. I mean, what do they used to what do they used to do to heretics? Right. So, you know, I'm just saying maybe some old timey Europeans should have uh, taken more initiative there. And maybe that's a hot take. But I would just say all things considered, history would have been a lot better off if, uh, you know, the, the German authorities or even the British authorities where he got exiled to would have done that. And before you come at me saying stuff like this one guy said in, re in the replies, he says, do you want to live in a society where people can't read something they don't like? Uh, buddy, let's be clear about this. Again, you can disagree with my take, but let's be clear about this. That is already the society that we live in. Speech is censored all the time in the West. And the reason why your speech is censored in the West is because of the legacy of Karl Marx. OK, so let me just point, you know, you can say, oh, well, hypocritical. What I'm just saying, OK, let's be honest about that. The reason why in there are these hate speech laws in his homeland of Germany, in the European Union, you know, the reasons why you can't say certain things about transgenderism in Canada and England and even here in the United States, where the First Amendment admittedly is quite a bit better. Still, look at things like social media, right? Look at look at the censorship of social media. Look at. Um, you know, the fight against free speech on college campuses. These things all exist. All of the all of the issues with free speech that you see in Western society and you constantly complain about in one way or another, they can all be traced back to the legacy of Karl Marx. So all I'm saying is, hypothetically, if I were given the chance back then. If Germany back then, whatever, if, if that, you know, back then, if an imperial European country in the 1800s, who, again, didn't really respect free speech to begin with, just decided to censor the guy <laughs> in, in exchange for a world history that would never have had to know Marxism. I mean, I'm just saying I would take that. I would I would take that exchange. And I think it should have been done. OK, instead, we totally dropped the ball on that. And here we are living in the aftermath of that idiot named Karl Marx. So I don't know, whatever, just some food for thought, just just an idea. It's kind of a it's, I mean, it's a thought exercise. Obviously, it's like a philosophical question, hypothetical question. What's done is done. But I'm just saying and you can answer the question in chat right now. If given the opportunity to, again, throw Karl Marx in jail. And burn all of his books back in the 1800s. And knowing what you know about human history, would you take that? Would you take that? Would you accept that? Would you go with that? I don't know. See, my thing is I would. I would. Because I get it. Yeah, free speech, free speech. But we're not talking about a society in the first place back then that respected free speech. So why not at least, you know, <laughs> censor bad stuff? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, you guys can answer that in the chat. Uh, but, you know, here we are.
So anyways, it is May 5th. On a happier note, it is also Cinco de Mayo today. So I want to say that I love Hispanics. Okay, shout out to all the Hispanics in chat. All right, if you're Hispanic in chat, just say, I am Hispanic. I love Hispanics. It's true. And as we know, as we know, the best taco bowls, the best taco bowls are made in Trump Tower. Now, here's the issue. Sadly, I do not have access to Trump Tower or its taco bowls, but I do love Hispanics. And so, you know, because I love Hispanics so much, obviously, we had to find a way. And so out of love again for the Hispanic people, I got the next best thing, which is the burrito bowl at Chipotle. It's so true. The burrito bowls at Chipotle are among the best. So again, to celebrate whatever Cinco de Mayo is, I don't even understand what it really is, but to celebrate, I know it's just Hispanic. So to celebrate and show the fact that I love Hispanics, I have gone through the great lengths and the reason why we were late tonight, I have acquired the burrito bowl from Chipotle and as a show of my goodwill to Hispanics and the Hispanic community, as 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 a means to improve the state of Asian Hispanic relations in America, I will take a ceremonial bite from this Taco Bell Taco Bowl, because, again, what can I say? I love Hispanics. And so, you know, this is historic. This is the historic Vince Dow bite from the talk the, from the Chipotle Taco Bell on the stream. You know, if, everyone get your cameras out. OK, this is history. You, you talk about, you know, Trump crossing the DMZ into North Korea. Oh, wow. That was so historic. This is more historic. This is uh, a million times more historic, okay? He takes the ceremonial bite. And it is so true. It is so true. I love Hispanics, okay? And, uh, you know, next year, I say next year, Cinco de Mayo, we got to find a way to get the Trump Tower Taco Bowl. I don't know. We'll go all the way up to New York. We'll, we'll put it in, a, we'll put it in a, a bag or something. I don't know. But there you go, chat. You all just witnessed history. You all just witnessed history on this stream. Happy Cinco de Mayo, okay? Do you know what this is right here? This is a can of Celsius. Celsius is an energy drink that destroys your liver. Do you know what does not destroy your liver though? leaving a like and subscribing to the channel so be sure to do so and be sure to check out the vince dow show every weeknight at 8 p.m eastern time which likewise does not destroy your liver celsius destroy liver liking and subscribing does not last i checked i do the math if you like and subscribe you still have one functional liver can't say the same about the celsius so do that